if you're going to take the risk of running advertising online, shouldn't you get the benefits of learning from someone who's in the platforms every second of the day? Welcome to BidPixel.com's Marketing Ear Biscuits, the original podcast dedicated to digital advertising run by two Aussie guys who ride around in kangaroo pouches and drink Fosters and 4X beer. Jay Jonas, welcome back. Uh, Dave Grandfield. How are you, buddy? Good, mate. How are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, Another uh, day in paradise. Mate, it's beautiful out here. Hey, uh, Queensland's got a public holiday this weekend too, by the way. So I'm not coming to work on Monday. Me either. What? New South Wales has it as well. Mind blown. So today, buddy, we're going to talk about scaling. Q4 is coming up. It's time to start making a little bit more money for a couple of stores and customers of ours. Uh, it's a fantastic time of year to scale if everything goes right. Let's have a chat Definitely. about it. Let's have a chat about actually making sure that everything's right before you start scaling your your, uh, your ad spend and your results on Facebook. So I just want to preface this whole blog, vlog about the fact that we are not talking guru stuff here. We're talking just real world stuff that works for e-commerce store owners, you know, the zero to $5 million a year e-commerce stores and marketing managers who are managing budgets for uh, brand awareness and sales for businesses. Like we're not trying to sell some shiny tactic this is just you know how to scale honestly and ethically and how to make people money right yeah so there's kind of like three types of scaling that we always refer to there's like scaling up where we increase the budget there's scaling out where we'd expand the audience and then there's kind of scaling across so finding new niches or products um you might have a uh, you know, you might sell swimwear and you scale out and start selling beach towels or umbrellas, or you might have you know, a unicorn product, or you might have, you know, you start selling bundles of products instead. Instead, So what I really wanted to ask you some questions about today was more about scaling up. So how do we increase budgets and do we have to scale out and expand audiences at the same time? So big questions, mate, how do we scale customers effectively? Um, gee, that's a that's a big question. Let, let's it is a big let, question. Yeah, let me, let let's me break ref, it down. Let me break that down. How? What are the fundamentals that we need to make sure of before we even start to scale a customer's ad spend and results? Yeah, sure. So that's probably yeah the best place to start. So um, number one is for our customers to know what their CPA is or cost per acquisition. You know, how much does it cost them to to, you know, how much are they willing to spend to get a purchase and what's the average cost per acquisition? Um, so understanding what are all of their outgoings in total at the end of the month? How much have they spent? How much have they made? And the difference in between is um, where we can break that down divided by number of purchases. Right, I think that's a big one there. Right? If we don't know that and if we haven't calculated that with a customer, if they're not physically profitable, there's no point in scaling, right? Or if they're not that's making, right. so, if they're not making yeah. enough money, why scale? Exactly. So to break that down even further is, and really simplify it is if your product costs $50 and it's costing you $55 to get a purchase, you're going backwards $5 every purchase. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you yeah. might, you might chalk it up to a marketing expense, but why would you want to scale that uh, realistically to, you're not making more money scaling that you're just making uh, you might be scaling brand awareness, but that's not what we're talking about today. Exactly. So, so once we meet these, once we know that we've got a cost per acquisition covered, we know that there's some good return on ad spend happening. We know, and we know what that break even return on ad spend is. How do we start scaling uh, and let's refer to campaign budget optimization because that's where Facebook's moving and that's what we practice and use. Um, how do we start scaling customers once we know they are ready to scale? Yeah, so there's a couple of things like, as you, know, as you mentioned before, is we, we can scale up the budget. So um, it can be as simple as taking you know, someone who, you know, for instance, might be spending $2,000 a month on ads and just increasing the budget of how much with the initial the um, the current campaigns that are running, so there's five, ten campaigns, and we just increase the budget on each of those, and we go from two thousand to ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars a month of ad spend. Yeah, so sure. that's one way, um, and you're kind of getting you're able to engage with a larger portion of the available audience that those campaigns or ad sets are targeting. So that's the first way. The second one, I guess, is what we kind of refer to as scaling out, where we're 
expanding the audience. So we're kind of going, you know, looking at different audience segments, whether it's interest based or um, look like audiences or anything in between really, um, anything that we've got available to our disposal and we scale out sideways. So let me give a little bit of a context there. So when we're creating ads for someone, say we've got a fairly small budget and we're testing and we know they're profitable, generally the BitPixel team will have uh, some stacked interests or some stacked lookalike audiences, right? So yeah. we might have a campaign and then there might be five different interests within that one ad set in the campaign. So once you're saying, once you start scaling out, what do you do with those five different interest groups? Oh, gee. Like um, up, up, we're putting them into their own campaign or their own budgets now, yeah. right? or we're giving them their own ad set. And so you, you know, one ad set that might have had five interest-based targeting might then go into five ad sets that then CBO lets the best one start performing better, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we kind of, we, we work out the plan that, um, or the best possible plan to let the algorithm decide what it needs to decide and work and run with the best set of um there's data tools available so, so people like there's all this talk in the industry when you you kind of know what you're doing and the old background saying is that there's a heap of stuff like surfing your budget and day day parting and all this sort of stuff like we're talking cbo right now uh, the algorithm for a long time has been doing what people day parting were trying to do and tricking the algorithm to only spend at the time of day when they needed to right but we kind of defunct that these days with the results that we see happen, right? And if you, you, know, you were saying to me before, if we started day parting on a CBO campaign, you're kind of throttling the algorithm from getting a really good return on ad spend when the CPMs might be lower at a, at a time of day that you didn't think people were purchasing. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there's, yeah, there's definitely a bit, you know, there has been you know, traditionally a bit of talk around day parting, which is literally, turning ads off at certain times of the day. So to save spend and put the spend to other portions of the day that might be getting, you know, more sales or, you know, or perceived more sales. But what we do see is that um, the algorithm will often throttle that budget in those times of day. Um, and for instance, it might be two o'clock in the afternoon where it's traditionally not much, not many sales happening, but it's also traditionally can be a really a cheaper time of day to run ads. So it works great for brand awareness or, or when a purchase does come through that time of day, the CPMs over those couple of hours might be extremely low. So if you're so, day parting, you're missing opportunities potentially. So I'm not going to mention who it is. I'll say first name Mel. When I went through your account yesterday and looked at what that other agency was doing, that's essentially what they have been doing. They're day parting and not allowing the algorithm to work how it should. And that's where I showed you the, the, the history of changes. That's why things were happening. Like each minute there was like budget changes and on and off. And there was too much of that going on, right? And they weren't actually letting the algorithm do its thing. And that's one of the big diff well, what probably one of the big reasons why your ads weren't working currently. So yeah. and just, CBO <laughs> plays into that. CBO allows the idea of CBO is really, I guess, in the success that we're finding, and it's it's not a hard and fast rule, but from our testing, what we found is that letting it run and letting it optimize um, across the board. So not only in terms of just letting ads, but also the time of day they're running, um, what ads are running, the audiences that they're running to, um, with a healthy time frame is what we're seeing across the board is it's just you know really setting up for wins um and that micromanagement of say ad set level um campaigns is it, it's a bit dated now from what we're seeing bold statement so playing with your budgets at an ad set level is not necessarily the best way to scale your ad accounts these days in facebook um no, and, and yeah. everything is, yeah, everything's with a grain of salt. So sometimes when we, you know, um, when we do scale, we might see one ad set in inside of a campaign um, using CBO to start, you know, it might go out of control. So then we can put rules on that or we can set maximum spends. And same thing is when we're, when we're increasing budget, we might increase the budget of a campaign, but we might not want to increase, you know, that might, we might not want that to flow through into a you know one particular ad set so we can cap that so that that one ad set might have a maximum daily spend or a minimum daily spend 
All right, we got real deep real quick then. We were supposed to be talking uh, basic on this one. So <laughs> let's wind it back. So remember, we're talking to mummypreneurs, e-commerce stores who are just trying to level up, maybe go from half a million or a million and just scale their results now. Um, yep. Scaling up and increasing a budget. What's your like your, your top tip or your top two tips on just how to increase the budget if they're running a campaign budget optimization strategy? Great. So... Ideally, and, and in our talks with with our own Facebook reps, it's um, increasing by really maximum 20% every 48 hours or so is kind of in order to not force that campaign back into into the learning stage, if that's, if that's relevant. And that's one thing where is it relevant or is it not, depending on what the objectives are and how the, how the account is in general is how that's affected. But if something's performing really well, just incremental changes every few days of 20% is one way to do it. Perfect. Um, okay, so scaling up, incremental changes. We've seen great success in campaign budget optimization strategy, incrementally scaling. Keep it out yep. of that learning phase and just bring more budget into it. All right, let's talk about scaling out and expanding the audience. So you mentioned to me uh, before we went live, it was two things, right? So using we've touched on pushing interest groups or LLAs a little bit more. I'd love you to touch on the LLA side of things, look like audiences, yep. but also let's chat about scaling budget and putting more money into the top of funnel as well and how that kind of plays out and why it can be risky, but why it needs to be done. Yeah. So the difference with increased budgets allow for greater testing of market segments really. Um, and and, and you kind of you're taking, you have less eggs in one basket, so to say. So you can you can break down you know, if you're looking at different types of interest base, you can break out those interests and really segment them down. Um, so with look like audiences, rather than stacking them all into one or two ad sets, you can create a, a campaign specifically for look like audiences you know, that are similar um, and allow them to kind of you know bounce off each other and learn from each other um, and let the algorithm optimize that way. Um, and and then using you know smart exclusion, so excluding certain audiences from others, so so you're losing over you know you reduce overlap um, on targeting and, and ads and and therefore um, you know, the possibility of being removed from auctions. Yeah, sure. You're not getting audience overlap in your auctions, and you yeah you're serving the ads out to each audience. Okay, so let's yeah. talk a bit. So one thing I've noticed, and you know we've tested it out over the years, and we see people making the mistake of it still is they maybe get a winning ad set or they get a winning campaign uh, and they just scale that hard, right? You might go from $200 a day to $20,000 a day on this one particular campaign or audience or ad set that's working. And then one day it just tanks. And I kind of like the strategy that you were just talking about it kind of circumnavigates that because what can happen is your audiences get fatigued or you literally run out of audience and you've put all of your eggs in this one basket or into this one audience and say that audience pool wasn't big enough. Suddenly it's going to fatigue really hard and fast when you've got no more people to serve and add to that are going to purchase or generate a lead. So how do you get around that with top of funnel strategy? So one interesting thing, I guess that we see when we do a lot of audits on accounts is Sometimes that lack of exclusion. So when you're going out to a top of funnel or what we would call top of funnel, so a cold audience, um, and not exclude no, some, you know, some accounts, not excluding people that are currently followers of the page or friends of the, of the business or purchasers of the business. And so when you're going, say, an interest, a cold interest base group um, and ad set, by not excluding those people, you're also targeting them. So it can also work as a remarketing campaign without even realizing or without it being intentional so you might hit that you know initially you might get great success and you get that low-hanging fruit but um it's often not you know there's no longevity to it because you exhaust that audience really quickly um so the use of exclusions is is really handy um and that's probably one big error that we see yeah, perfect. So then next question, as you start to scale, let's say customer has seven times return on ad spend, they're spending $10,000 a month on their ads. What if we scaled that to 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month in ad spend? What do you usually expect to see happening with that return on ad spend, that ROAS metric? And what do you tell your clients before we start scaling? 
Okay, so yeah, that's a really good one. So, you know, if, you know, let's just talk around numbers. Say a client's on five, you know, on average, we understand what their break even ROAS is and what they're currently achieving on their account. So if their break even return on ad spend is say 2.8 um, and the account's getting a five, you know, or around five fairly consistently. Generally, as we scale is, um, we, we need to keep in mind what that break even is. You know, how much are they spending on ads and how much, you know, if they're paying an agency, are they paying for that agency? Um, and and they're, they're, those numbers are set. They're, they're fixed numbers. Yep. As you scale budget is what happens is generally, well, not generally, that the, the actual needed return on ad spend isn't as great. So where they might have needed the 2.6 as a minimum, that might actually come down to a 1.6 because they're covering all of those expenses with an increased ad spend really quickly. So rather than spending $2,000 a month on ad spend and they might need a 2.6, if they spent 20,000, they might need a 1.2. So there's economy, there's an economy of scale as they spend more, the return on ad spend doesn't necessarily have to be as good as when they first, before they started scaling. Uh, and yeah. you know, that's, you know, yes, it'd be great to keep that return on ad spend it's rock steady where it was, but part of scaling and part of growing is one, that economy of scale, but two, you're also inserting more and more people into a, a brand awareness or top of funnel or a reach kind of objective where you're not necessarily going to get a return on that ad spend for people coming into the top of your funnel. It's more about at the bottom of your funnel. So that's, that's really good exactly. to know. That's great to know. And that's something that we make sure all of our customers are aware of before we start spending more money for them. Uh, exactly. Especially e-com stores, like little e-com stores, mum, dad, businesses, smaller brands. Uh, that ROAS metric is such an important metric that everyone focuses on, but it's just one part of the whole holistic scale of growing someone's business and making them profitable. Yeah. I heard a really good statement a while ago about, um, I think it was the head of Macquarie Bank, possibly, talking about digital advertising. Um, and he just mentioned the difference of thought between looking at your marketing budget from a balance sheet perspective versus a profit and loss perspective. Yep. And one of them is, is long-term. The balance sheet is long-term. It's like, this is a portion of budget that we've designated for marketing as a profit and loss is what is my month on month? What's my return? What's my return? And it really depends on, you know, on where a business is in its life cycle and what its objectives are on that view. So um, I think a bit of both is really healthy. Yeah, cool, mate. Awesome chat. So final tips on scaling a business into Q4. Uh, well, let's break this down. If you're an e-commerce business, you're wanting to scale your results in Q4, disregarding bidding and cost going up. Let's just, let's actually rephrase that. If you're an e-com business and you're wanting to scale regardless of time of year, Scale, stay within 20%, use a CBO audience or CBO campaign structure so that you know that the algorithm's working the best it can and make sure that you've got a big enough audience and you're introducing new audiences so that you don't fatigue what you've got and the results suddenly stop. Can you rephrase yeah. that any better? Um, not really. And make sure that you can handle it as well. That I guess your business can handle that growth. That's probably something. But that's we, a whole nother conversation. <laughs> that's probably something we didn't touch on, right? Like how much stock do you have? Do you have to go back into pre-order status to sell stuff? Do you have the working capital to be able to actually float the business when you, you get busier, right? Uh, are you yep. ordering from China quarterly? Are you ordering from your suppliers and manufacturing? And is there a six week on the water turnaround? Like that's all things that you need to consider before you start scaling. And that's things that a good agency will actually go through with you before they just pull the trigger if, and put the hammer down on the ad spend Mate, yeah. fantastic chat thanks for bringing some enlightening conversation to that kind of segment of the industry and you know it's you get so many people just talking about surfing budgets and day parting and you know duplicating out campaigns and ad sets and like at the end of the day be smart and wise with what you do and is it wrong to say don't listen to that stuff do what works for your for your campaigns or do what works and um, how do you how do you kind of speak to the people that just are holding on to the past and the stuff that used to work? I think number one is every business is different. Every business's needs are different. Every business is you know, what they require from their advertising. It is sales, but the level of the um, the details of that is different for every business. And understanding that is one thing. Um, 
and it works differently for every business. So I've spoke, you know, we've got several Facebook reps and um, one that I spoke to is there, they do say what works for one might not work for another in terms of scaling, but it's understanding the data. The great thing about digital advertising, you know, digital marketing is the data there. If you can understand the data, that can inform your decisions. And the data that applies to one account might not apply to yours because it's not yours. Understand your data and that can help inform your decisions to scale. There's the sound bite to introduce this episode. Understand your data and it'll make informed decisions. Don't listen to other people. Make sure you understand your own data. Mate, that's awesome. Jay, thank you very much. I think that was one of the shortest episodes we've done. Uh, I know. It's great. So... I mean, I'll miss your voice if we're not talking for another 10 minutes. Uh, I, I tell you, what, we'll, <laughs> we'll press pause on this and we'll keep on chatting, okay? Uh, oh, great. So, Jay Janis, uh, Chief Operating Officer of BidPixel, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I'm Dave Granfield, one of the co-founders of BidPixel, and I hope we provided some value for you today. If we did, comment below, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, uh, if you found us on LinkedIn, follow us on LinkedIn. But you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them because we just want to provide sort of some ethical answers and let you know about what happens in the industry that maybe you as the marketing manager or you as the e-commerce store owner doesn't necessarily know or understand. Um, every, question, every question that gets asked that's reasonable, we will make sure we address it on another episode and an upcoming episode. And we've got some cool things coming up in the next kind of quarter that we're going to introduce to kind of really incentivize you guys to participate and join in with us. So thanks heaps everyone. Bless you and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks guys. Cheers.